Hello everyone, you are welcome to Bessinos tutorial and in this video we are going to talk about types of odes. We will cover in this video lecture definition of ode, types of odes, list of important odes and some examples from English literature and functions of, of an ode. An ode is a poetry form such as sonnet and elegy. जैसा कि सोनेट और एलेजी एक फॉर्म ऑफ पोइट्री है उसी तरह ओड भी एक क्या है आपका फॉर्म ऑफ पोइट्री है ओड इज अ लिटरी टेक्निक फॉर्म ऑफ पोइट्री दैट इज लिरिकल इन नेचर सो फर्स्ट थिंग यू शुड नो दैट इट इज लिरिकल इन नेचर बट नॉट वेरी लेंदी एंड इट इज नॉट वेरी लेंदी यूजली ओड्स इन विच पोइट प्रेज पीपल नेचुरल सीन्स एंड एब्स्ट्रेक्ट आइडियाज सो दिस इज यूजली यूज to praise people natural scenes and abstract ideas ode is derived from greek word eden so here is the word eden and this is a greek word and from this word this ode word is derived which means to chant or sing jiska meaning hi kya hai to chant or to sing it is highly solemn and serious in its tone so it is usually if we talk about ode it is solemn and serious and all important uh, points are highlighted here you can note down in its tone and subject matter and usually is is used with elaborate patterns of stanzas however the tone is often formal so if you will see ode and uh, the examples we will discuss later you will find that most of odes are formal but sometimes informal form is also used a salient feature of ode is its uniform metrical feet so you will see uniform metrical feet in ode okay so this is its uh, peculiar quality or salient feature but poets generally do not strictly follow this rule though use highly elevated themes now let's talk about types of odes in english literature so here are three types of odes in english literature first is pindaric odes and second is uh, horatian odes and third is irregular ode one by one we will see the example of these odes the so first is pinda odes this ode was named after a greek uh, an ancient greek poet pindar so pindaric ode are uh, you know taken or named after the name uh, there is a greek poet named pindar and that's why we call them pindaric odes who uh begin writing choral poems that were mean to be sung at public events so first thing you should know that these are mean to uh to be sung at public events so here is your key point and this can be asked in your exams let me tell you that if you are preparing for ugc net or any tgt pgt exams you can uh, join our courses video courses and pdf courses you can directly whatsapp me on my whatsapp number 7409287156 now let's come to the point again it contains three triads strophe antistrophe and final stanza as epoch so you can uh, remember these uh, you know three with the shortcut there, there is a trick to remember all these parts first is uh, c the word is c and with this you can remember strophe antistrophe and the last one is a part here here you can remember this one and this one for e is for a part and a for antistrophe and stop and final stanza as a part with irregular rhyme patterns and length of time lines <coughs> horatian ode let's talk about horatian ode the name of this ode was taken from latin poet so first was greek poet second is latin poet and latin poet named uh, horace that's why it is called horatian ode unlike heroic odes of pindar meditative and intimate horatian ode is informal so as i told you both kind of uh, you know tone you will find formal and informal uh, in odes so horatian ode is kind of informal uh, and pindar ode uh, ode are usually uh, intimate and meditative and formal these odes dwell upon interesting subject matter that was simple and were pleasing to senses 
since horatian oaths are informal in tone they are devoid of any strict rule so they are, are uh, usually you will not see strict rules irregular oaths this type of ode is without any formal rhyme scheme and structure such as pindaric ode hence the poet has great to try uh, get to try any types of concept and moods freedom and flexibility because these are informal uh, keep in mind that these are informal type of uh, odes and uh, they are you know free now they have freedom and flexibility that's why these are called irregular ode you can see uh, there is no fixed uh, structure william wordsworth and john keats were such poets who extensively wrote irregular odes taking advantage of this form so william wordsworth and john keats wrote many uh, irregular odes we will see some examples later in this video list of important odes you can note down all these notes uh, from odes so first is uh, you know an ode for ben johnson Ro robert herrick uh, on solitude abraham cowley an ode to himself ben johnson uh, nativity ode 1629 milton to evening william collins ocean uh, ocean and ode edward young ode to winter thomas campbell dejection and ode st coleridge Ode on Solitude, 1709, Alexander Pope. Ode to Duty is by William Wordsworth. And Ode to the Confederate, uh, Confederate Dead is by Alan Tate. We will discuss this uh, ode in this lecture. Dejection and Ode, H.T. Coleridge. Ode to a Nightingale, 1819, John Keats. And as we know that they have uh, written irregular ode, we just gone through. Ode on a Gracian Urn, 1820, beautiful ode by John Keats. To Autumn, John Keats. Ode to Aphrodite by Sappho. Ode on Periods, uh, Bandit, Mayor, The Ship of State, Horace. Ode on Melancholy by John Keats. The Sound of Their Names, Alan Bess. Ode to uh, The Durag is by Joshua Bennett. Ode to Anger, Marilyn Chin, 30 Lines About the Fro. Uh, Alison Joseph, Ode to Psyche, uh, John Cates, Flood, James Joyce, A Bird Song, Christmas Rogers, uh, Rogerty, The Old Strike. And let me tell you, uh, if you are trying to, you know, memorize these and you want to learn all these odes in English literature, it is really a tough job to do that. But if you will make some flashcards, uh, definitely it will help you a lot. So what are basic, uh, what are flashcards? Uh, basically you will write uh, you will make uh, pieces of uh, paper okay so with a single paper you can make eight cards okay like this or even nine cards you can make and one side you will write down the name of the ode and the another side you will write down the name of the writer so in this way you will have um, many cards and you can play with those cards and uh, you can flip them you can uh, you know like um, uh, cards you can play with them and you will remember all the odes in uh, two three days and uh, when whenever you will uh, see these odes you will remember the writer as well as the name of the odes if writer is asked you will find the ode and if uh, ode is asked or writer is asked you can find uh, vice versa okay so like this it will help you a lot just try this and you will find the magic of uh, you will feel the magic of uh, making flashcards. Ode to Spring, Thomas Gray. Ode to the West Wind, P.B. Shelley. Uh, the Bard, a Pindaric Ode, Thomas Gray. Quaker Graveyard in uh, Nunchukat, Robert Lowell. Fan Piece of uh, Imperial Lord, Ezra Pound. Hail Bishop Valentine. And a Hymn to Godfather, John Dunn. Uh, this is the uh, uh, last one. Him to Godfather, I have uh, explained this whole ode on the channel, on my channel, so you can check out. To Adversity, The Bard, The Progress of Poesy, Thomas Gray, uh, To Virgil, On Death of Duke, Wellington, Alfred Tennyson, uh, To Napoleon Bonaparte, To Thomas More, Lord Byron, On Cromwell's Return of From Ireland, Andrew Marvel, Alexander's Feast, Annie Kling Grew, uh, John Dryden on beauty, intimation, imitation of uh, immortality, 
Wordsworth. So now let's go through some examples of odes in English literature. You can see here, uh, ode on intimation to uh, uh, intimation of immortality from uh, recollection of early childhood by William Wordsworth. And uh, this one you can see, this is a perfect example of an English Pindaric ode. Uh, like here you can see, there was a time when meadow, grove and steam, the earth and every common sight to me did seem, apparelled and celestial light, the glory and the freshness of a dream. It's not now as it has been of you. So you can see this is a, a example of Pindaric code. Just observe the use of different types of meters here. Uh, we can see in each stranger which have made it easier to read and made flexible with simple rhyme scheme of A, B, A, B, A, C. So what is this uh, simple rhyme scheme used here? A, B, A, B, A, C. Example 2, if we say uh, O2 Confederate Dead by Alan Tate. Row after row with strict impunity, the headstones yield their name to elements. The wind wars without recollection in the Riventhos, uh, troughs, they split leaves, pile up of nature and casual uh, sacrament to the seasonal eternity of death. So here is the ode uh, by Alan Tate. This is the example of Horatian Ode, uh, which presents a consistent rhyme scheme. So if you'll see the rhyme scheme, you will find that consistency is there. It has no division into triads like Pinda Ode, but is less ceremonious, less formal. So this is not a, a formal one, more tranquil and better suited for reading. The purpose of using this type of Ode is to give when to pent up feelings. We will just go through uh, one by one uh, some examples and you will find find out the kind of odes here. Ode to the West Wind by P.B. Shelley and this presents an example of irregular ode which employs neither three parts nor four lines a stranger like Horatian ode. Nevertheless, each stranger of ode is distinct from the other stranger in rhyme scheme, pattern and uh, length. So there is no rhyme scheme you will find and you will uh, find no pattern and length that's why this is example of irregular ode next next example is the progress of poesy and this is a pindaric ode by thomas gray uh, here are some details the progress of poesy a pindaric ode by thomas gray in the above mentioned ode the speaker is addressing to poetry that is coming out among uh, from different places to find its echoes in nature this is good example of true ode uh, here because of seriousness in tone you can see and uh, now here is an example again uh, Ode on a Grecian urn uh, Sylvan historian who can't thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than our rhymes uh, Heard melodies are sweet but those unheard are sweeter not to the sensual ear but more endeared pipe to the spirit uh, details of no tone Ode on Grecian Art by John Keats, as we can see here. This ode has a regular and tight structure. And if you will uh, see the rhyme rhyme scheme of this, A, B, A, B, and uh, C, D, E, C, E, D. This is uh, one of the most celebrated odes in English literature. And that's why this is asked in many exams. Here is the another example, Ode to Spring by Thomas Gray. The busy murmurs grows, uh, glows some lightly over the current scheme, uh, some show their gaily gilded trim, quick glancing to the sun. Ode to Spring by Thomas Gray. This is another good example of an ode. The example is talking about the spring season here. He uh, and praises its beauty and expressing lofty and noble sentiments about, you know, the uh, spring season. Thomas Gray is uh, talking about the spring season and uh, praising it. Function of Ode. If we will go through the function of uh, Ode, you will see that there are uh, noble and lofty sentiments in serious and sometimes satirical tones, you will see. And since the theme of Odes are inspiring and lofty, they have universal appeal. Okay, also by using sublime and exceptional style, a poet endeavor to compose grand and elevated types of Odes. Sometimes odes may be humorous. So you will see these are sometimes satirical tones, humorous, and these are used for, uh, you know, praise, 
and because these are inspiring and lofty in their themes they have universal appeal so these are your keywords about ode and you should note down these so with this we end this lecture uh, see you soon in next lecture thank you for watching